slaying the top 1800 mythic rank in today's video. Welcome back ghouls and goblins. I hope you're having a magical day. My name is Hello Good Game and I am pleased to be your host within this Magic the Gathering Arena deck guide video, breaking down Jezkai Angels, discussing the deck list in depth, both the strategies as well as synergies in hopes of providing you a deeper understanding of how to pilot this deck effectively as well as efficiently, okay? Uh, furthermore, we'll demonstrate in our Mythic Ranked gameplay footage against the best decks as well as players in game. It's no joke. And then we'll wrap up finally with our concluding thoughts, deck review and channel news. If you want to help out, it's easy peasy lemon squeezy. Just drop a like, a thumbs up goes a long way. If you have any thoughts about the deck and ways to improve it or even these videos, hit us up in the comment section below. Of course, if you just wanna hang out with the community, say hello, maybe share your own decks. The Discord is always open, link in the description below. Cheers, of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so yet and consider becoming a YouTube member. Let's take a look at Jezekai Angels. It's a new lap record. Here we are. And now, as we get later on in the season, more people are in Mythic, it becomes a more competitive environment, and holding that top 1800 rank becomes, uh, you know, more of a challenge. So I'm pleased to announce that we have a deck working that is non-meta, okay? Uh, we've experimented with Angels at the start of the set, both uh, Boros as well as Mardu, they perform very well. Today, um, you know, mixing it up with something that I've wanted to do for a while, but, you know, obviously only able to play one deck a day, it's going to be the Angels with Errant and Gaidia. Um, this is a 2-3 for three that has Flash, which is really nice, allowing us to pair it with Instant Speed Interaction, Counter Spells, Removal, right? Um, and then on top of that, you can now look at the top card of your library at any time and cast spells with flash or flying off the top, which is really, really helpful considering that all of the angels in deck, which is what we're running as, um, you know, a primary creature type, have flying. So this is um, very nice for us as we can push through our deck a little bit faster than we typically would grabbing other angels as well as itself having flash acting as a flash blocker with three toughness, it's substantial and can take care of two twos with ease, okay? Uh, that's very nice, right? And then, you know, like I said, pairing it with the instant speed interaction, get lost, no more lies, right? Moving on, uh, including blue, because of No More Lies, one of our interactive spells in deck at instant speed for two countering target spell, unless it's controller pays three, if that spell was countered, it gets exiled instead, which is great. So um, again, you know, really nice within a, a mid-rangey aggro deck, protecting us from field wipes, right? That's something that the Boros deck did not have. The Mardu deck did not have, well, We've got it and it works great. So that's really what we're working with here. Of course, you know, we will have the lands to incorporate these cards into the deck, uh, as well as now being able to utilize the Soaring City as some additional utility for four. It will be reduced by one mana generic for each legendary, which we have plenty of, which is quite nice as well and uh, returning target artifact creature enchantment or planeswalker to its owner's hand, right? Um, so really nice addition to the deck there as well, okay? Aside from that, it's basically Boros Angels, and um, we will start out with one of my favorite playlines of the deck, Gaidia Font of Hope for two as a 2-2 two -two with Flying and Vigilance is a core card of the build. Each other angel you control will enter the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter on it for each angel that you already control. Furthermore, it can tap itself to add one white source to your pool that you can spend only on angel spells, which is what we're doing. So this is nice because that vigilance can attack. And then after on your second main phase can tap, utilize that mana on another angel, accumulating those plus one, plus one counters as well. The multiple angles here is quite nice. On the notes of ramping, 
we will also talk about the Iron Crag for two mana, tapping to add one mana of any color. And whenever a legendary creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may have it become uh, the Iron Crag that is uh, the Ever Flame, and it can equip to creature for three. And the equipped creature gets plus three, plus three, and loses other abilities. Um, so this is very nice for our damage output, right? Uh, helping us ramp early game and then increasing our damage output mid or late game. We have the Scrub Defector Might here for one mana as a 1-1 one, one with Toxic 1 that cannot block and can tap for one Phyrexian White, two life, one white mana. Choosing a color, another target creature we control will gain Hexproof from that color until the end of turn, as well as Toxic 1, and become unblockable by that color, uh, which is quite nice, right? Um, so very good protection for our build, as well as late game evasion, as we're looking to strike for lethal. Okay, so just like the Iron Craig, uh, his different uses, depending on what part of the match you're in, the Might is acting in a similar fashion. One of the other core cards in the deck, the Resplendent Angel for three as a 3-3 three, three with flying. And at the beginning of your end step, if you've gained five or more life this turn, create a 4-4 four, four white angel creature token with flying and vigilance. Beautiful. Furthermore, we can pay six. Pretty expensive. Uh, it's going to give the angel plus two, plus two, and lifelink, making it a 5-5 five, five with uh, the ability to now self-generate these angel tokens, which will be 4-4s four, with flying and vigilance. Very substantial. Keep in mind these angels will also um, be buffed from the Font of Hope, which is quite nice. And now one of my favorite play lines will be, um, you know, the Font of Hope on two, then the uh, Vindicator on three because of the Font's um, reduction should be confirmed, right? And uh, it's a 4-2 with the font in play. It's going to be a 5-3, which is really nice. And um, you can disguise it, but in this scenario in which I'm explaining, you would not. Um, and because of this, we're playing it on turn 3. It loses its summoning sickness, right? And then we'll play the angel after, right? Um, the angel will be, a, what, a 5-5, five, five, I guess because of Gaidia, because of the Vindicator. Uh, the Vindicator being a 5-3 now attacks, right? Gains five life because of the lifelink, is probably left alone because of the ward, right? Um, and that's gonna trigger Angel, and that's gonna trigger on top of your Font of Hope. So it's going to be, you know, a 4-4, a 5-5, four, four, a 6-6, five, five, a, six, six, a seven, seven Angel that you'll now generate on turn uh, four, which is ridiculous. Right? So very nice uh, and explosive play lines within the deck. The life gain is very nice for mitigating any interactions with other aggro decks that you'll happen to have along the way. On that note, we will be utilizing Angel Fire Ignition for three at Sorcery, putting two plus one plus one counters on target creature. We're also gaining Vigilance, Trample, Lifelink, Indestructible, as well as Haste until the end of turn. Furthermore, we can recast the card from our graveyard with the flashback for four which is pretty good, right? Uh, again, that would push the angel to a 5-5, triggering itself. Um, very, very nice for our play line there. Another angel in build, Aurelia, law above, five mana, 4-4, four, four, flying, vigilance, haste. Whenever a player attacks with three or more creatures, you draw a card. That could be us, that could be them. Why not both? And whenever a player attacks with five or more creatures, we're gonna deal three damage to uh, each opponent and gain three life which is fantastic. Increasing uh, our damage output is very nice. And obviously if they're attacking with that many creatures, they're an aggro deck, which means the life gain is even better. And the vigilance is uh, the bee's knees as well. Our last angel, two copies of the Inspiring Overseer. Not a great card, to be honest. Uh, three mana, two one with flying when it enters the battlefield, gain one life, draw a card. Um, the, you know, it's good, mostly for filling the void and helping the font of hope push up our angels, right? Um, because, you know, if you're playing this later on, hopefully it's not a 2-1. Hopefully this enters, you know, as a 4-3 and it's, uh, you know, a little bit more effective within the battle state uh, or battlefield. 
Aside from that, um, you know, we mentioned the removal in the deck. Strangle, one mana, sorcery speed, three damage to target creature or planeswalker. Two copies of Get Lost, instant speed, destroying creature, enchantment, or planeswalker. The controller creates two map tokens in which they'll sacrifice for one mana to explore a creature. Grabbing a land off the top into hand. If not, uh, they're going to put a plus one, plus one counter on a target creature that was exploring um, if it was non land, right? normalize countering unless i pay three it's going to get exiled if it uh, is countered which is great and then we talked about the angel fire as well finally generating value alongside errant and gaidia will be the case of the crimson pulse for three mana when it enters the battlefield discard a card then draw two very nice to do on an empty hand right just draw two cards for three mana thank you very much furthermore when we have no cards in hand it will become solved cool beans and then once it is at the beginning of your upkeep discard your hand and then draw two cards this is so powerful it's not even funny specifically in these mid-range creature decks where you know field wipes exist and maybe we don't always hit them with a counter spell but now what we can do is replenish our board state continue to apply pressure and grind out our opponent okay so utility lands the empire Four damage, attacking or blocking. Soaring City, bouncing. We already talked about this. Crucible Defiance, two one ones. They can chump block. They can attack. Um, you know, that's great. Cavern makes our angels uncounterable. And then our dual lands, really helping us with our consistency of mana base, okay? Thank you all so much for watching and supporting the channel. I truly appreciate it. Leave a like, hit me up with a comment. Join the community Discord. Drop by, say hello. Share your own deck, right? And uh, most importantly, kick back, relax, have a magical day, and enjoy. Going first. Cool. I like that there's removal here. Creature here. Protection for the creature. I just need blue land. Not that we're utilizing blue here. Also looking for a second white source. Easy peasy. This is not instant speed so sundown pass on one and that's going to allow us to play the screlv as well as a strangle if needed i would say that's a creature based deck not playing protection and opening ourselves up to removal is just about the craziest thing i've ever done though should we get punished or should we get punished? Risk it for the biscuit, bro. That's the question. Mm. Go big or go home. It would be different if we had a target to double play. Oh, what? Interesting. I did not expect. Alright, I mean, protection is in play. It's not active yet. We miss our land drop. Uh. Inspiring Overseer. It's alright. It's not terrible. And it's the right line. Well, yeah. Counter magic up. This isn't worth taking. I'm just going to slam it. As is. It's going to be a 5-3, right? We have the might to protect. It has ward. Next turn, we play the angel. Attack with the vindicator. Trigger resplendent. I mean, I guess they're all... I shouldn't refer to the one as eight. You know what I mean. I'm back. Land surveilling. We didn't want to attack because they've got the blocker. And I want to keep Scrabble, um active to protect the Vindicator or, you know, whatever, right? Two damage. I don't think it's worth it yet.
We are left alone. Oh. So I'm going to hold up counter magic when we do this. So we could make ourselves unblockable or force the double block. I think unblockable. And I think I pay two life for it. That way we're holding up removal. We're holding up no more lies. We trigger, like I mentioned, our resplendent angel, which is great. They have a lot of mana, so it might end up being removal, but we'll see. Having a resplendent angel that's triggering is priority, right? And that 7-7 seven, seven kind of still also needs to be dealt with. <laughs> Guide is not great, but then there's also the Vindicator. Ugh. What do I do? Field wipe! Angel deck running field wipe. Why not? Oh, wait. Oh, wait. That base is also covered. Take your time. I understand. It's a difficult game. Mm. I'm kind of thinking not so much, though. Ooh! We tapped out. Then we can remove a blocker and Ash catch him. Going first. Three land is great. It's a little slow. There's no interaction. <laughs> what could go wrong? I'm going to scrooch over. Um, I think this is most threatening, right? They're like, oh no, it's a blue deck. This is nice. A little Rampadelphia. A Pinalar deck? That's actually cool. Very much so. <sighs> I can't do anything about it, so we'll just take damage. I don't want to expose myself to removal. Right, like if we block the two damage, then they could have used, you know, a one damage or two damage spell. I think we just force removal. Hit for four. We just need to keep Pinalar um, inactive, if you will. No. No. I'm not into it. Oh, maybe I should have been. We'll ease in. I like double playing here. Wandering Emperor question mark? Why no play? <laughs> That's worrisome. You know? Removal? Just a big score. Okay.
I like activating this. But I also like empty handing myself. Because once this is active, that definitely needs to be dealt with, right? Let's just straight up draw two cards. Thank you. Angel fire. Right there. Uh-oh. We do have removal, but that's a... That's a good card. Looks like they found big score irrelevant. And they took our angel fire. Oh, no! <laughs> you dog. Love to see it. I'm all excited about my angel fire and then think, what did they get? Let me look. Like, no, no, you already know. <laughs> that life gain is super duper sustainable. Wow. I hope that two mana is not relevant. Dang, bro. Nice. Oh, yeah, it's most definitely worth a nice or five. I'm just going to take it now, see if we get it, and if we don't, we can bounce it. They might have removal. They do. Okay. That's good. Soul partition is not the worst. And we're going to solve this as well. I think it's time. Swing for five. This is now solved, which is great. They're impulsing. Oh no. One land shy. End of next turn, right? Yeah. So can I get a counter spell, please? If you can draw it. I can't, though, is the thing. And I don't really want to play more into them. I guess we just push in and take it on the chin. Or we hold up Gaidia and play that with Flash. Oh, I miscounted. That's six. Well, this way we can still play Gaidia. That actually might be better. That might actually be better now that it's uh, come through. That field wipe is brutal, dude. Brutal, bro. Looking for the land. Where if this counter spell was just like in our hand, you know, <laughs> it's right there. Yeah, I'll give you another one. Take our five. Counter magic up. Draw engine literally saving us. Don't you.
we force tap them out, don't we? Or else they can activate other stuff. This at least ends it with a minus three. You either don't get it, which is like this is up to uh, RNG now, right? Like or luck. The algorithm, dude. So they chose to not pay it because they need to do this instead. And that's actually probably pretty good for us. A utilizable land in play. We now have flash active for five, which gives us four, five remaining. Let's hit for four. Down to one. Removal in hand, which hopefully we don't use because I need the five mana. Is good, yeah? Angel Fire Ignition is their dream play. They get an impulse. It's not bad. They've got the mana to do plenty. A field wipe! I haven't seen one of those yet. They're top 1,000 too. It's a good player. With a good deck. Right? It takes a lot to get that high in the ladder. No joke. No play? Interesting. Well, I'm in. Single target removal. And then they're going to block the might. Oh, Helix is good, though. Acceptable. Oh, I should have cast this. What am I doing? Well, it actually does not matter. We should have cast it, though, because then we would have had removal on both of them. AKA no blockers. But can't we do this and just exile it because we have enough mana? Right? I have five mana and it's like an instant speed flip. <laughs> sure. Sometimes you just can't lose, right? Oh, they have removal. They're really hanging on. I'll tell you what. Yep. Field wipe, obviously. Just clean it. Really? Minus three? They should field wipe before the minus three. So no field wipe at all. Oh, they just want the draw. Well, I'm going to let them have the draw just so I can play my flash creature. This is a good match. Like, what if they stabilize? We should get it. We have counter magic up. They're tapped out. I love that we have protection here. That's phenomenal. So even if they had something, no. What a great game. That was phenomenal. I am impressed. 
All right, top 200. Good luck, HGG. No red land. I wish you had it, but you do not. That's not it either. Wow, okay. Red source off the top. Please give me that red source off the top, baby. No. Taking my damage. We have plenty of land. So that's good for us. Just get it out of there. If you have another one, by all means. Ooh, no token for you. We could just bounce it, but then what? They're just going to replay it. And we can wait. Okay. Yeah, that's the problem, right? So I feel like we should just toss that back. Or just block the token. Yeah, I guess. Nice. Definitely not bad. The land is not cooperating. I guess just try to beat them with life gain, right? I mean, okay, so let's put this face down. And then next turn, we can flip for one. That's not enough. I would rather actually do exactly that, because then at least we're getting one. Because we're not blocking anyways. And the summoning sickness is still dropped. This is still blocking. Ugh. They've got good camp. They've got good tempo. What's that last card? That's a lot of damage. Can we pay the ward? No. You just get to take the copper coat. You do have something? Or are you just gonna tap the the team? Mm, acceptable. Wow. You're a legend. Very good. That's great, bro. Another copper coat, cool. So that's problematic, right? Thinking good game? Uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's try. I think they've just got it though, right? Like that is a lot. No, it's, it's not good. Unsustainable. If only we had some removal of this game. Lots of red land in deck, just not available to us. Which is one of the troubles about running multicolor deck like this. I love variants. Alright, let's keep seven. We're going first as well, which is nice. Just the planes. I mean, obviously, keep the utility lens. And how do you draw all three utility lens? Isn't that why? I 
This to me. They think we're a Boros deck, which is acceptable. Losing the might. Ow! I'm shocked. <laughs> Codebreaker's good. So good that I just remove it. Correct? Absolutely. Holding on again to our utility lands for as long as we can. We're gonna have to lose this though, so. That is what it is. The War 2 should be fairly handy here if they can't grab any mana, right? Unless they had like two non-targeted one damage spells. And th that would get us anyways, right? So. No block. Spell on top. Can't target us because of the ward. Which is fine. Play with fire, they scry. Honestly, I'm just going to play my Angel. It's weird, but what if we get another land and can take a second creature, right? We should leave it there if it's not... Oh, no. So I should have taken life gain with it. That exact thing that I was afraid of happening has happened. Do you have a third one? I'm shocked. Bro, you're a legend. That was pretty wild. I need my six land, uh, and it needs to be a planes off the top. No block. Maybe they have lethal, and no block here is a mistake. There's no way. All right, let's roll out. Oh, this is brutal. Oh, this is brutal, dude. Two angels, that's gonna be enough blockers. Uh, with the one vigilance, of course, right? So that's fine. And while well, we're gonna be coming back next turn as well as having six mana just to activate it if we need. <laughs> Sorry, Mono Red. <laughs> you got so close, dude. Oh, no. <laughs> no! <laughs> Our opponent's gonna be going first. Let's keep seven. The curve is good. Depending on how this plays out, the Iron Crag early is not bad. But. Not a requirement. All right. We have a forest in play. We're thinking about what to do next. Maybe they're cursing because they didn't draw their second land. Oh. Okay, it wasn't even their turn yet. So they had like a one damage instant speed. Well, didn't have to be damage. It could have been like a... Yeah, it, it did. Maybe... No, I don't know. One mana, instant speed green spell that does something weird. Oh! Atraxa's Fall, which is actually a pretty good card. Specifically against the Angel deck. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm.
Let's see if there's another removal spell. Maybe. If they do, that will open up their runer for us, which is acceptable. Oh, you just can't help yourself. Nor can I. Nor can I. Just take that. Thank you. Sorry. I mean, they get the draw out of it, which is good. I guess. Don't. Don't. <laughs> I'll do as I please. I'm warning you. Four mana in play. Into the grave? Is this this weird green spell that I think they have in hand? No! One Kumano. Oh, I assume that would be a performer. I'm just going to straight up play this. Hit for two. If we play it as a um, detective or whatever, um, or mysterious creature, whatever, you know, the, the disguise card is called, um, it transforms and has already entered the battlefield, right? So it would not trigger this. So that's pretty important to me in this match. So I'm just going to hard cast it, you know? And now, is the performer any target? No, I think it's just opponent, right? I wish I could look at the card to see. So even though, like, I know it, unless you've got it, like, actually memorized or looking it up on the side, I guess we could do, but... Uh, no block. It's yours. I assume they flip it. Deal three with the flip, then three with the attack. Six on the turn, which is substantial. Which Stalker's friend? Okay, just a rage. I got scared when they were targeting me. The ward should save us, though, I think. Wow. Damage, dude. To flip it now is weird. They should have flipped it earlier. They missed one damage, if not. But I think they have something in hand still. Double rage. Woo! It's crazy. Fairly well positioned, I think, today. The life gain's really good. The damage output is very nice. The sustainability um, within our interaction is, is great as well. I know they're going to appreciate this. Hi. Hello, hello, hello.
They also need to deal 16 damage, right? Like, there's a pretty good chance we don't even block here. I'm just like, whatever. Go for it, dude. It's a code breaker. Oh, unexpected. I thought it was a performer. That's so much cooler than, you know, I originally thought. No block. And good game. I don't like the land, Mulligan. This is much better. Toss. An angel. Hold removal. Oh, gross. Oh. This is going to seem silly, but it can convoke, and I don't like that. So. Chicken on it! Oh, Azor. Well, maybe it's okay. Um, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I am no longer in control. To solve artifacts, four counters on thing, and then it. Okay. Okay. Interesting. What else you got, Willis? That's a nice way to spend your mana. Yeah. Angel! No, you go. Oh, that sucks. Don't do that. Draw lands. Thank you. I said stop it. Land Adelphia. Oh. <gasps> I hate Land Adelphia too. <laughs> Ooh. All right, all right, all right. All right, Jeskai Angels, no joke. We started this day at like 96% or something. Top 1800. Please and thank you. A win streak will do it, uh, you know. And with the life gain in deck, it's very much an option. And it's not just like, you know, gain a life when a creature enters the battlefield, which is still good. It's like, you know, hit for five, hit for seven, uh, life gain. And... That coupled with early game defenders in which we're interrupting and slowing our uh, opponent's damage output is really just not a good scenario for the other aggro decks, right? Um, you know, I could see maybe a more removal centric deck like a mono black or a Rakdos having a bit more success against it. We didn't really see much of that today. Um, it would be cool to test against. We still have the might to protect, right? We still have no more lies. So I think, you know, it's a very well-balanced deck. Um, Case of the Crimson Pulse is fantastic here as well. Uh, I think you can definitely expect to see more of that from myself uh, in future videos as uh, just an extremely underappreciated card currently when we have so many um, field wipes circulating. Uh, it's a great way to uh, replenish your board state, right? Uh, on that note, there's some other cards I was thinking of. Case of the Uneaten Feast. You know, we can bring our angels back from the grave, maybe. Uh, Lunark Veteran. You know, it's just not cutting it. Monstrous Rage. I love the damage output, but just use uh, Angel Fire. Archangel Elspeth could be actually worthwhile, honestly. Like, this is a, a good idea. The Archangel of Wrath. Certainly not bad. The life gain's good, and you could still kick it for red. Food for thought. Boonbringer. Um, definitely not bad either. It just is like, how do we fit all these angels in the build, right? So I kind of like the fact uh, that the Vindicator can exile cards. I think that's maybe a little bit better than just applying, you know, flying first strike lifelink back up one. You know, it's not really that crazy. Steel Seraph, again, you know, we used to use this for the lifelink that it would provide. 
now the card just has lifelink on it which is great so you know i don't even know if we need it and the operative is cool uh again you know just kind of a silly idea here having fun with the game you know wish stalkers frenzy uh definitely an option in lieu of our strangle now active at instant speed instead of sorcery speed right not able to target planeswalkers though but get lost can do that no more lies can still take them so i think you know this is definitely something that we could uh experiment with and test in lieu of strangle okay and then the creature lance if we weren't you know worried about playing slow i think that we should at least have two of them in the deck so another improvement that i'd like to make okay so just giving you the heads up, you know, there's always room for improvement. You get these lists online. Don't be scared to edit them for your own liking, right? Um, you're a good Magic player too, and you make informed decisions, right? Everything can be improved. Uh, it's easy to overlook something, right? And then for another individual, a fresh perspective to catch that thing. So that's what I've got. Let me know what you've got in the comments below. Discord is also open if you want to share your own decks with our community. I'm sure they'd love to see it, and we would be happy to meet you. Thank you so much. Have a magical day, and I'll see you soon in the next.